What's up everybody? Hello Gabe. Day number two here in Panama. We're about 35 miles offshore. I've got Adam, I've got Crystal, I've got Captain Shane. We've got first mate Mike and we are already in the fish. Right here we're pulling up to a commercial tuna fishing boat who's setting a long line and there's such a cool story with it and we'll get into that later. These boats stay out here for weeks on end and they actually create a bait ball underneath their boat. So when guys like Captain Shane and that's his sister boat right over there with the Sportfish Panama Island Lodge, they come out here and they work together with these commercial guys. Captain Shane's got the best electronics on the boat, some big Simrad radar. We've got good sunglasses so we can see. And right now we're looking for busts on the surface for porpoise and for tuna exploding. And right over here at the back of the boat, we can see it's already starting. So some of our baits of option are these Yozuri poppers on some meat sticks. We'll throw these baits as far as we can out to the birds and where the tuna are popping. And then back here, we've got live bait. All of his boats get live bait in the morning first thing. We've got them bridled up in this tuna tube right here. So all we gotta do is pull up and just pitch them right to the fish. This boat right here, yesterday we pulled up to one and traded some beer and some sodas for some sardines. Such an awesome story. We need to get on there and fish with them for a little while. Look at the live bait they got right there in that little bait well. Big old palm tree. So we saw boats just like this that had one single outboard. Look at the hooks, they got tons and tons of hooks in there. We're about to make the trade. We got the goods. talking about a fair trade. Can't be a good trade out at sea. The only way it could get better if we had little Debbies Great. for them. We do have, what are they, chokas? Okay. We don't have enough to trade though. Ah. Gracias. That's so awesome. You guys, I would get on that boat and fish with them for a week. There's no telling what those guys see. We're out here so far from land. I think the mainland's 50 miles that away. And here these guys are living, making a living. Dude, that's, that's like, to me, the coolest part of the day. I love that. Adam, we need to get us one just like that. We need to uh, get some outboards, diesel engines out at sea? Uh-uh. That's because you get seasick. I don't get seasick. The exhaust is no bueno. Do you think you can add one of those boats to your fleet, please? <laughs> I would definitely come and do a trip with them. Babe, you don't think that looked fun? Those guys stay out for like two weeks, a month at a time sometimes. However wow. long it takes for them to fill their hold up. Beachy, that's a good long that's fishing a trip. long time. See, oh look, see this tied to the side of their boat? Yeah, we already showed them that, the oh, logs. Yeah, the, the, that's the raka. Right yeah. there is that's, the raka. Those are what those, the black. those satellite receiver things are usually attached to offshore. That's so neat. Yeah. So when you're watching your machines, that's his radar right there. What are you looking for here? Here I'm just looking to mark either fish or bait, you know, as we, as we, as we pass over the, the area, straight underneath the boat. The transducer right here is in the back of the boat, so right here is like real time what's happening underneath the boat. So if a fish marks, it'll, it'll be like a little, these are, this is kind of faint here, but anyway, the number right there shows that it was marking a fish 115 feet. Hopefully we're gonna come into this area here and mark some more of these, more of the bait and the tunas. We see there's a bunch of porpoises out in this area, but we won't mark the porpoises on the, on the, uh, on the screen here because they won't pass underneath the boat because the, 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 the 
sonar from the transducer hurts their ears. Because that's exactly how they talk. You'll, 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 you'll see porpoises, exactly. You'll see porpoises all around the boat, thousands of them, but they'll never go right underneath the boat because that tick, 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 tick hurts their ears. So if we mark someone here, we know it's either bait or fish. That's one thing I've never thought of in my life, but makes total sense. So a porpoise, a dolphin, we call them the same thing. You'll hear us say there's dolphin sometimes and it's porpoise, and then you'll hear us say porpoise. They communicate and they hunt via sonar exactly like the unit in this boat. They send out clicks. That click goes out, hits something, and bounces off and comes straight back to them. So this sonar to them might even sound like a bigger, badder dolphin or porpoise. <laughs> These boats out here, if you haven't watched our first tuna video, they have logs and stuff attached to the side of them that the bait likes. And right now he's setting out a line, but not your typical long line. He's waiting for a tuna to hit, and when it does, he'll send out another hook and do that over and over again until the line's loaded and they'll pull it in. These little birds, some of them are turned, some of them are boobies. We've got frigates right there. These birds will actually land and then look in the water. They're looking for the tuna and the bait. So right now he's blowing smoke because he's giving it gas. All that bait that's hugged up to the bottom of his boat, he's trying to get it out from underneath him. Yeah. Oh, big tuna just skied. You gotta put one on the spot here. You don't want to go over his long line. Don't go over his long line. Right back, put it right in that rack. It goes right in the whitewash right there. Look at the tuna's just crashing back there. It's not in there. Go. Let it swim back. Here goes nothing. Oh! Come off. Dude, that was nuts. Uh oh, here goes the big bait. Dude, this is nuts. Adam, have you ever seen anything like this before? Ugh, this is so surreal. It's insane. I got hit like five times before it even hooked up. Michael's got another live bait. Babe, what do you think about that? That was amazing. Like, <laughs> could you imagine being with in your dive gear and letting that boat oh, go past you? He's close. Yeah, those tunas are just sitting there behind that that boat, sitting there behind the, the commercial boat. The guy's chumming. Nice! Look at that! Atta that boy! Yeah. We've got zero time to celebrate. We need to get right back in the action. Alright, hold on guys, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Beachy! Yo, every, it's a chaotic mess. We got the boat right there with the tunas behind it. Beachy's hooked up. We got more live baits out. We got Johnny over here. Johnny's gonna run a It's out. full action right now. Here's your chance, short call. Reel that, reel that. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Right, nice and easy. You got him, you got him. Reel down, reel down right here. Boom. Back after the foot. He's in the boat. That's what I'm talking about. about that. Look at the colors. <laughs> These tuna strong like bulls. <laughs> Put the Florida heat to them, huh? That's awesome. That's why we came to Sport Fish yeah, Panama buddy. Island Lodge. Nice tuna, Kristen. Get Great the job. Get the hook Got that circle hook right there in the corner of the mouth. Perfect. Mucho bueno. He'll flip it and repeat. He's gonna take the belly part out now. 
done. Once he gets the entire thing played, he'll skin it, pack it on ice, and you will never in your life eat fresher yellowfin tuna than that. Time for a little nature walk. Just got in from fishing. Our arms are sore, our backs are hurting. And we're gonna go see what this island has to offer besides amazing fishing. Right here's the beach. That's our lodge. And Captain Chain's taking us off in the jungle, which is a little nerve wracking because last night Crystal and I were walking and what did we walk up on on the pathway? A python. Isn't that your favorite animal? No. So there's fertile ants on this island. There's sloths, there's ant eaters. There's little boas and pythons and no telling what else. So we're gonna stick to this trail because the fertile ants could be laying right there and you'd never see them. That's Adam's adopted dog, Trouble. Trouble. <whistles> Only speak Spanish, isn't that what you said? <laughs> it's a beautiful little walkway. Look at the thorns on that. Oh gosh, see, now I'm catching myself just wanting to step in the bushes. Look at the thorns on that tree. Captain Chain at all times has a full crew of men working on this island, keeping the underbrush under control, keeping the coconuts from falling on people's heads and just keeping it beautiful. So the island we're on is called Isla Paritas. It's about 10 square miles and other than his lodge and a couple few houses, it's completely uninhabited. There's no roads, no infrastructure. Everything you see is cut in by hand. He has some cruise ships that come in a couple months of the year and they park offshore and they bring small boats in and all the people enjoy his beaches. Fun fact is though, he has to keep all the coconuts out of the coconut trees for insurance reason. Nobody wants to die by a coconut. You guys come straight out of the jungle, straight into paradise. This is an almond tree right here. This is an almond tree. Big beautiful piece of driftwood. Of course, you can't go anywhere without seeing trash. This stuff washes up everywhere. They're down here picking it up every day. Look at all the crabs. If you come to a place like this and don't fall in love with it, I don't even know what to tell you. Look how tall these coconut trees are. And so, your guys have to get up there and get them all out? Yep, once a year we harvest them all. Like usually in November, like right before the season, right before our summer here. They're just starting to grow back now. Bro, I'm leaving before that happens because there's <laughs> no way I'm going up those trees. Yeah, some of them are like 50 some feet tall. Look at her. What is it, Trouble? <laughs> she just caught a crab a minute ago and once she caught it, she didn't know what to do with it. Redneck would be obsessed with these crabs. These logs, that log right there and this log right here was tied off to one of the commercial boats that you would have saw in our tuna videos and that's what they keep the bait under the boat with. Then once they're done with them, they let them go and they end up washing up on the beach. There's no telling where this tree originated from. Look at, oh, oh, get in trouble, get in trouble. Get in trouble. Bro, if you put a piece of meat on this beach, the crabs would be insane. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh, she get it, get it. Look at this little baby. Oh, get him. Trouble right here, trouble right here. Get him, trouble. Get that crab. Get that crab. <laughs> trouble, he scared you. So right here we have some of his crew. They've just been up at his little bar that he has for the cruise ships when they come and some of his clients that want to walk down here and just have a relaxing evening. They're headed off. We're gonna walk up here and check this place out. There's a little lagoon back here behind that has caimans and stuff in it. I think tonight we're gonna go look for one of those. Talk about a beautiful bar in the middle of nowhere. This is an oasis and I'm stranded. We're about to go get a drink. You might not be able to walk back. I'll just be swaying a little bit. The uphill is a little bit easier than the downhill. You got a ride right there though. Yeah, we'll call them back. Send smoke signals out here. So these little lagoons are created by natural rainwater. It rains hard here every night. And once they get full, 
they'll break a path through here. The waves will then wash the sand back in and the process will start over. You guys check them out on Instagram. Right there it is. So just imagine being out in the Pacific Ocean. There's nothing around here, no civilization. And you come around the corner, putting along the beach, and out of nowhere, here's this beautiful bar. Talk about an oasis. I tell you what, I don't sweat much, but this humidity has gotten me first rate and like crazy. You guys, check this out. I'm gonna film it with my phone. Adam just stepped here, and right underneath where he stepped was that dude. I guarantee you he would cause you some serious mm. pain. Yeah, it's, it stings like a wasp. Yeah, this is going to sting more than a wasp. Look at that thing. Mm -hmm. Now the little ones, the little tiny ones are the ones that really sting hard. Right, uh, Alex? I don't want to find out. Yeah. The, little, the little black ones, those are the ones that really sting hard. I've been stung by those before. And it's just, it's like a wasp sting. It's not too bad. Here's Good what we were, Gabe. Yeah, here's what we were doing when I looked down and saw this thing. There's a snake right up here and Crystal said something that oh, he's almost on you. I grew up hearing my mom say. She's like, this is a good snake. It's a dead one. <laughs> Here's something pretty cool. This is a termite mound. Most of us in the United States would think it was like a wasp nest, but it's not. It's a termite mound. Ooh, oh, soft. I was expecting it to be hard. <laughs> Here comes the deadly Wasp. The wasps come out and get us. <laughs> the murder hornets. Look at that tree. This is a Nisporo tree. This is the super hard wood. Like the stuff that we make the, all the decking and the structural material that we use for all our posts and beams. Termites don't eat it? Termites don't eat it. it it's so dense it doesn't float. Super heavy. It's similar to Ipe. You know like Ipe people buy in, from Brazil and whatnot. It's pretty big. Yeah. They're, and this is a small one. So Alex just told us these trees right here with these funky roots are called rubber trees. Look at this lookout point right here. Boy, if you were a pirate back in the day hiding from somebody, <laughs> yeah. this would be a legit spot. So there's an island just right out there. And that's it, right there. <laughs> this is his logo. Those are the GPS coordinates. Tell you what, babe, I know I see this a lot. But this is gonna be a really hard place to leave. <laughs> what if we just built another lodge up there and let him use it the rest of the year and we just use it when we come? This place is stunning. It doesn't get any prettier than this, I promise you that. I'm gonna say it right now. Our first tuna video, the meal, I thought was you couldn't beat it. Look at this. So we actually deep dropped these while we were coming in from tuna fishing. We got tuna poke, just straight up rolls, uh, tuna. Some fried, what are these called? Rays. Rays. Uh-huh. King, the, the little kingfish. The Rays. best french fries in the world, which is just like we make them at hunting camp. Coleslaw, some tuna melts from the tuna that we caught. I mean, <laughs> mad props. We got Steve. That's Mr. Lee right over there walking away. He's probably the best cook on the planet. <laughs> he just doesn't like the camera. We got Mr. Agner. Sorry, I was eating french fry. I'm starving. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. For always doing everything. This crew around here, guys, like you have to make yourself get used to, they want to do everything for you. When you're here, they want you to be treated like a king. And that's what they do. Um, even Steve, he did our laundry for us. We had some dirty clothes, folded them, washed them and folded them. They'll carry your gear up for you. And the meals are worth the trip alone. Uh, the price of a mission is paid for with just the meals. I got to come over here real quick and steal one of these. <laughs> do, 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 do. Look at his wing. Do, 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 do. <laughs> She's just looking at it like it's a piece of art. I love it. I think this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. This one's funny too. Look at his fin sticking out. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> this one's got his mouth. Babe, on. he probably doesn't think that's as funny. He was down there living his best life. <laughs> this is what I'm straight up after right here. Just straight raw 
the tuna here is just mind-blowing so in the states and a lot of places around the world it's illegal to clean a fish before you get into port meaning we got to put him on ice whole here they clean them while we're out there like you've already seen and they're able to put the meat in ziploc bags and get it submerged in ice immediately so it's super cold super fast but then captain shane told me today something else that they do they bleed it for two days meaning they're allowing the blood to seep out of the meat they keep cleaning it and keep changing the bags and then after the second day they commercial vacuum seal it for the clients and you're able to take some of the meat home with you this right here to die for if you follow along you know during dinner time in these videos you never see me eat a lot i'm about to hurt myself right now with just some straight up raw tuna this is probably my favorite thing in the world to eat it just melts like as soon as it hits your mouth it melts and if you've never tried raw tuna do it because it, it it's unlike anything you'll ever eat it tastes totally different and it tastes absolutely amazing my kids used to not like it once they tried it with an open mind now they eat it like like they're going out of style mm. so that's just a regular tuna sandwich that he made into a tuna melt be good? It's not gonna be around for long. That's really good. Everything here you see is good. Look how beautiful my plate is. Be ashamed to eat it. I don't know if you can hear those ocean waves in the background, but I am currently rocking on the porch. It's probably making y'all seasick. I'm currently rocking on the front porch of another accommodation place to stay here at the Sportfish Panama Island Lodge. Um, this is a big house, um, with a full wraparound deck, gorgeous view. Um, this lodge here has options for you if you just are yourself and a couple people, or if you want to bring a ton of people. I, this house has tons of beds, like it's incredible, I'm fixing to show y'all. It's huge. Bring your whole crew, invite everybody, and that makes things just more affordable for, for all people involved. So let me show y'all how beautiful this place is. First off, like I said, huge wraparound porch. The view is amazing. You can see the ocean over there. It's gorgeous. Let me step inside here. Look at that. That is a giant marlin up there. Beautiful kitchen. Every accommodation comes equipped with a wet bar. We also have a refrigerator here, soft with water, Cokes, beer, whatever you want to drink. Bedroom, bunks. This is a three bedroom, three bath. So every room has its own bathroom and big shower. Boy, look at that thing. Gosh, that's a gorgeous mount. Dang, that is a stud rooster fish. Big old tuna up there. Room number two, bathroom. Again, there's room for, gosh, five people in this room. Bathroom number three and bedroom number three. Again, bunks, full bed at the bottom view from up here there's a quick little view of the little village oh oh dolphin our um lodge over there has beautiful mounts in it as well so you just sit whenever you come in you sit on the couch or you lay in the bed and you just stare at these beautiful mounts and have amazing dreams of what's to come the next day when you get on the boat and go fishing <laughs> 